Welcome to Costco. I love you. Welcome to Costco. I love you. It's not news to anyone. Costco has low prices, good quality items, and a cult following. But how? Well, here are 10 reasons why Costco is so successful. Successful, powerful, handsome. Emma! <gasps> oh! Costco's history. No, honey, you're in history. I'm history. <laughs> Back in 1954, an attorney named Saul Price inherited an empty airport hangar in the city of San Diego. Immediately, he knew what he was going to do with it. He saved up 50 k and then stocked up on wholesale jewelry, furniture, and liquor. With those items in stock, he launched FedMart, a warehouse-style store where people could pay a $2 membership fee to access the assortment of deals he'd procured. By the time he sold FedMart in 1975, he'd grown it into an astounding $300 $150 million per year, 40 location chain. And we're in a volume business here. Like Costco. So after he sold FedMart, Saul launched Price Club, a one-stop shop that offered basically anything you could think of. The thing that made it stand out from its competitors is that it didn't advertise. The stores were ugly and bare bones and refused to mark up items as much as other stores did. Saul had a protege named Jim Sinegal, who worked at FedMart and then at Price Club. He knew all of Saul's successful strategies, and he knew exactly how to create the perfect store. Door. And in September of 1983, Senegal and his friend Jeff Brotman launched the first Costco in Seattle, and the rest is history. It's been good! It's been great! It doesn't boost markups. Sometimes less is more. <laughs> Costco's huge buying power allows it to get great discount deals with vendors, and instead of boosting their markup to try and get more money from its customers, it passes down those savings to its shoppers. Costco has stated that it caps its markups at 14% for brand name items and 15% for its in-house Kirkland brands. This even includes wine, which is notoriously given 200% to 300% markups at other stores. You have tried to fool us. But even though it caps its markups at 14%, most items in the store are only marked up at 11%. If you compare this to the 25 to 50% of other stores, you can start to see why people love Costco so much. Costco doesn't want its customers paying more money, and it doesn't rely on making huge profits off its sales. Remember, you're still paying to get access to these deals. Offering these great deals to its customers is why Costco has such a loyal customer base. You'll stay with me till the end. Till the very end. Two words, membership fees. Got tons of it at Costco. You see, I've got an exclusive membership card. Less than half a century ago, people would have considered it nuts to charge customers money simply to walk through the door to buy something. But Costco's been doing it since the 80s, and people have been happily obliging since the old FedMart days. Costco's members pay either $60 or up to $120 a year to get a membership, with the price depending on your membership status. Why? Because they believe having access to the store's good prices and bulk items justifies the upfront cost of a membership. Did you know that Costco makes just over $3 billion in annual revenue from its memberships alone. I have way too much money! There are approximately 51.4 million people with Costco memberships, and they can't seem to get enough of it. The renewal rate is an impressive 90%. And out of those people, it looks like there are more than a few with a Costco obsession. How do we know? Well, there are countless Costco blogs, Costco forums, and even Costco Facebook groups. People talk about how much they love the store, share deals with each other, and sometimes even create memes related to the store. Costco just this might be the rock star of the retail world. I'm a rock star. Oh my god. Costco fans. All right, guys, this fanboy stuff is a little much. There are plenty of Instagram accounts and websites dedicated to Costco. Costco has even become a travel destination for some people, with one fan sharing that she'd been to nearly 70 Costco stores across the world. And it might even be a place for romance. At least one couple has tied the knot in a Costco. But why do people love Costco so much? Retail experts have examined this phenomenon, and they have come to a few 
different conclusions. The first one is that some of this Costco devotion comes from physically holding a Costco card. Look what I got you. My very own Costco membership card! The exclusivity of the Costco card makes you a part of a community, which will only deepen your brand loyalty. On top of that, there's a sunken cost fallacy. Since people have already spent $60 on a card, they feel that they have to indulge in as many deals as possible to make up for it. Another part of the Costco craze is that everyone loves a good deal. Anyone who's gotten something on sale knows the rush of victory at the counter, and often, we can't get enough of that. Well, whether you're there for the deals or because you're a loyal soldier, Costco can be sure that its customers will keep walking back through the doors. I'll be back. Less choice, more bulk. And I'll be fun at Costco when we're shopping for bulk paper towels. Ah! While many people believe that variety is good for business, Costco does the opposite. Other stores like to offer a wide variety of products. You might walk into the chip aisle and have over a hundred different brands to choose from. But at Costco, there will only be a couple of brands. Why? Because Costco knows its customers freakishly well and can curate its selection towards what they are most likely to want. Because of this, Costco solves the paradox of choice, in which customers have too many options. This causes stress in customers, which can lead to delayed decision-making or can even deter them from buying something in the first place. Well, it just it doesn't feel like playing anymore. It feels like work. It's like I'm working in the field. <laughs> But it's not just that, it's also cheaper to stock fewer items. To save even more, Costco's supply chain is rigged to minimize steps. Items are removed from trucks and driven straight to the aisles on forklifts, where they sit on giant pallets, waiting to be plucked by shoppers. But while Costco stocks less, it sells things in bigger quantities. Everyone knows that at Costco, things come in bulk. You can't just buy one pack of gum, they come in packs of 12. This is because, for most customers, Customers, it makes more sense to spend $400 once per month than $100 on four different trips. It saves time for the customers, and it saves Costco money. It's a win-win situation. Yeah, feels it. It makes products cheaper. Damn it, Costco, you've done it again. So we know that Costco limits the brands that it stocks and is very picky about the vendors it chooses to work with. When Costco finds a product it likes, it spends months and months working with the vendor and its factory to both amp up the item's quality and reduce the cost. For example, in 2012, there was a toy that retailed for $100. Costco had the option to buy it at $50 and sell it for $60, but decided to try harder to cut costs. Over the course of several months, Costco ended up working with both the vendor and the factory where the toy was manufactured. The end result? They were able to reduce the price by 50% and ended up selling the toy for only $30. What? How? Good management. It's in stories like this where you can see that Costco actually cares about its customers. Ultimately, the company would have made the same amount of money if they had sold the toy at $60. But because Costco is dedicated to lowering prices with shoppers, it went out of its way to try and reduce the cost. There have been other instances of Costco re-engineering things to make them cheaper, such as changing a certain cashew container from a circle to a square so that more could fit into the shipping boxes. At the end of the day, it means that customers get to save more and more. Wow, that sounds like a really good deal. It treats its employees well. <laughs> good job, everybody! Oh my. Unfortunately, retail workers are among America's lowest paid employees. In the past years, we've seen just how important they are at keeping daily life running smoothly, and yet big companies still refuse to pay them a living wage or to give them any benefits. Costco, on the other hand, understands that treating employees well is good for business. The average wage for a Costco worker works out to be about $21 an hour, which is nearly twice as much as the hourly wage at Walmart. Walmart. We're gonna be rich! Rich! What's even better is that 88% of their workers receive company-sponsored health insurance. Because of this, Costco employees continue to work for the company for years, meaning that they have an extremely low turnover rate, which means they don't need to train new employees all the time. Other big companies should definitely take this page from Costco's book.
How? How did you do it? It cares about its customers more than its shareholders. <coughs> you should get that cough checked out. Costco has doctors now. CEOs of big public companies are often trying their hardest to maximize shareholder value. To do this, they hike up prices, lay people off, and cut corners by giving customers worse quality products. In the last 30 years, the percentage of corporate profits going to stockholders has increased from 50% to a shocking 86%. This has resulted in fewer deals for customers and less money for employees. But once again, Costco goes against the grain. Since it opened in 1985, investors have complained the company has been too generous with its customers and employees. We're doing things my way from now on. Let's move! Shareholders have been calling for higher markups on goods, stricter prices, and reduced benefits for workers. But Costco has repeatedly refused to meet these demands, both because it cares about its employees and customers, and because it's actually proved good for business. By sticking to their principles, their stock has gone up 387% since the year 2000. Cynical told the New York Times that Wall Street is distracted with making money immediately and will do anything to get it. But Costco doesn't see it that way. The people behind Costco want to build a company that will still be around in 50 years. And that's certainly something most people can get behind. Simple. Built to last. Costco is a maze. <laughs> Try not to get lost. Come on in. Another reason that Costco is so successful is the way the stores are organized. Costco has arranged its stores to be more than a simple grocery stop. Every item has been strategically placed to draw people in, keep them in the store longer, and ultimately make more sales. It starts with the basic store layout. Necessities are placed at the back of the store, which means shoppers have to pass everything else in order to get them. That means that every time you go to get milk, you have to resist the impulse urge to buy something more fun for your Yourself, like a computer game or a giant bucket of cheese balls. Just buy it. You don't have to rationalize everything. <sighs> then, of course, there are Costco's famous samples. On your treacherous path to the grocery section, you get to try unlimited samples from food to massages. According to experts, free food has the effect of making people much less disciplined shoppers, which leads to even more sales for the company. Lastly, there's the treasure hunt aspect of going to Costco. Shoppers can always expect to find the unexpected at Costco's stores, and that's part of why they come back. Costco has an ever-rotating lineup of surprise deals, such as designer items, which keeps customers hunting for good deals. Oh no, the hunter has become the hunter. It doesn't advertise. Maybe it's worth the penny. Huh? Yeah, you're paying for advertising. Walmart spends about $2.4 billion on getting the word out about its store. All things considered, that's only around 0.5% of its total revenue, which is why Walmart is considered to be stingy on advertising while still being one of the largest advertisers in the world. Now, let's take a look at another store, Target. It spends a little over 2% of its revenue on marketing. Costco, on the other hand, spends essentially zero on marketing. It has no advertising budget, though it does send mailers to both prospective and existing members. How can such a large company get away with barely any advertising? Well, there are two reasons. Firstly, Costco as a product sells itself. Uh, that is pretty smart. The membership obviously has great value to those who shop there, and other retailers simply cannot match them on price. Secondly, driving existing members to the store more often through marketing wouldn't really help the company make more money, since membership fees are the real driver of profits, and spending heavily to gain more members doesn't make much sense either. Ultimately, if Costco was like Walmart and spent 0.5% of its revenue on marketing, it would take out 17% of its operating profit. If it were to spend even more, let's say 2%, like Target, then that spending would erase nearly 70% of Costco's profit. The numbers just aren't in favor of advertising, and it goes to show that you can still be successful without it. Either way, you win. We've got more. Just tap or click for another great video, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell. And hey, leave us a comment.